Recently on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast, General Hux himself, Domino Gleason, had some comments about his character in The Last Jedi. It seems the good general has been convinced that Hux, or had been convinced that Hux would not make it through the film. I'll be honest, he said, I was very surprised that I survived. I kind of imagined myself getting blown up in a ship pretty early on. Spoiler alert, I suppose. There's also this moment where Ren is on the ground and it looks like maybe I'll finish him. It's like, what state would the franchise be in if if Snoke and Ren are gone? And it's just Hux going right. Can you imagine how annoyed people would have been? Luke, were you surprised that Hux made it through when you first saw the movie? Would you prefer that Hux hadn't made it through? And if you could switch his death with maybe one other character... Uh, would you do that? What are your thoughts on that? I I was not surprised, but I can't say that I spent a lot of time thinking about General Hux or speculating about General Hux because he wasn't a character that I care about either way. Um, I'm in hindsight, I'm glad he made it through because I think he's a good kind of comic foil to Kylo Ren, and I imagine they're going to be the top two in the next movie. I have. A hundred percent confidence he'll get it next movie, probably from Kylo Ren to go. So I'm glad they did it that way. I I don't think there was anyone in Last Jedi that they necessarily needed to kill off that they didn't. You know, possibly Rose would have been the only one that I think would have had a good ending. But I really like the character of Rose. Yeah, me too. I'd, I'm happy that they're going to continue it. Yeah. So I'd like to see see more of her. She's so bubbly and adorable. I I I want to see more of her. But but other than that, I I think it was the the proper amount. I think if if they were going to get rid of Hux and we could trade it, I think I'd probably trade it for Phasma. I still don't think Phasma got her due. Oh, I forgot but, about that. But just because Phasma's a much cooler character than Hux, but I do enjoy sort of his slapsticky I liked the cartoon the, version of I really enjoyed when they're in the I don't know what they call them. They're not AT-ATs, but they're the new AT-AT. Right. That's out there. I enjoyed him and Ren in their kind of banter, you know, Kylo yelling out an order and then Huck screaming the order over the top of him. I thought that was kind of fun. You're completely right about Phasma. What a great character design. It was cool to have a woman in that position. I enjoy Gwendolyn Christie. I wish we would have got more from her and not had her be kind of this this just joke of a character that gets beaten on by everyone. It's almost like Boba Fett, though. Yeah, it's you know, true. Like, Boba Fett in the original series, he was like, wow, that guy's awesome. Look at him. He's a bounty hunter. And he did nothing. Like, no. he did, he found, he's followed Han. But other than that, all the catching yeah. of Han was really the Empire. And then they just gave it to him. And then you don't even see him get him to, to Jabba. And then Han, like, accidentally kills him. The embarrassing so. death. You want, you wonder, was he purposefully floating as garbage? Or was he screwing up flying a ship and just caught in the space garbage? And then was like, oh, they're there. Go after them. <laughs> All right, let's move on. One other, I know The Last Jedi hits just keep on coming, but we have another piece of news. In an interview with Collider, Last Jedi director uh, Ryan Johnson had some comments about decisions he made for the film, namely where Poe and Finn had separate stories. After Force Awakens, many fans were hoping to see the two friends work together, but as we know, it was Rose who took the trip to Kano by instead of Poe, the pilot. Meanwhile, had a, the pilot, meanwhile, had a story that dealt more with the rebellion and resistance leadership and dealt mostly with Admiral Holdo. Johnson explained that the pair would be too close and ag- would agree on everything, which wouldn't be any fun, and that he found Poe, besides Luke, to be the hardest to write for. Luke, do you agree with Johnson? And if you could do it all over again, uh, what would the cinematic paramedic have done in that situation? He is too similar to Finn, I think, to have them go to a side adventure. And I think what he was trying to achieve, whether you liked it or not, I know you really didn't. I I did to a more aspect is I think they were trying to set Poe up as the the future leader of the entire resistance. So to have him just be gone somewhere else without everyone else doesn't really set that up. And that's what I think they were going for there. If I was going to switch everything about that, what I would have done is not have them go to Cannabite. I would have had Benicio Del Toro's better performed character in my version be a guy who was in the resistance, but not because he believes in it because they were paying him to be a hacker in the resistance. And they basically find him in the bowels of ship, Finn and Rose. And then he helps them go from that ship in space over to first order ship. So you cut out all that candlebite garbage and bad CGI and just move the movie along a little quicker and get them over there. You still have the hacker. He can still betray them. They can still fail in their attempts to to do things outside the lines. You can still have all those elements, but it would have made more sense and eliminated a lot of the things that are the big drawbacks of 
Last Jedi. Allow me to play devil's advocate then. In that situation, you lose something that was really important to Ryan Johnson, and that was this idea that anybody can be a Jedi, and that was the reason that he had those those slave children in there. And if you if you ditch Canto Bite, you ditch that portion. And are you okay with that? I don't think that you necessarily have to. I think if you would have just shown that end scene with some kids being kind of smacked around and then one goes outside and uses the force it still would have had the same impact i don't think we need their backstory that they're slave kids from candlebite you still get the point that anyone could have the force and that a new generation is inspired are you ready for some kids seriously serious questions oh man bring it on we've got one today it's from the nits and the nits writes who's the best non-darth vader villain in the star wars universe that's a great question my mind immediately goes one place which is darth maul wins the award for just best character design coolest looking guy love everything about him but he's just not in it too much so what i would say now is that at where we stand kylo ren is my favorite what i think they did with him in last jedi is absolutely amazing i understand him as a character unlike any other villain we've had minus vader he's terrifying now even more so than he was when he was kind of more of a guy behind a mask when you actually see his motivations and some of his doubt, but then giving himself fully to the, to the dark side at the end. So I, I think he is absolutely the best villain they have going this side of Darth Vader who can never, never be topped. So who would, who would you pick? Well, real quick, just about Ren, and I'm not going to, I think it would probably be Ren, but I'm going to pick some other ones just for the sake of varying it up here. Yes, one I thing, went first. One thing I want to say about Ren is that, he, and this was, somebody online had said this on some podcasting or some Star Wars show, but he's sort of more Vader than Vader. Like, he wants to be Vader so badly. Yeah. And, like, Vader couldn't kill the Emperor. And Ren does it like that. Like, Vader, like, wasn't the guy that blew At up At first, Alderaan? couldn't kill the, the Emperor. He does kill the Emperor. Right. Yeah, okay. But, like, it was much easier for Ren. Yeah. Uh, Vader wasn't the one who blew up Alderaan. Ren was, was destroyed, like, five yeah. planets all in once. And so the, you got a guy who's so worried about measuring up, but he's... As, as the, the person put it, more Vader than Vader. That's why I hope they don't redeem him in the next one. Just right. just keep him going. Keep him keep him as bad and dark as he can possibly be. I agree. For me, I'm going to... Can I do two? Sure. All right. I think number one is the Emperor. Uh, the Emperor is so good in Return of the Jedi. I mean, he's, the, he's probably the best part of that movie. And just his sort of everything that the Rebels think that they have, he's set up. And he's so manipulative and it's just creepy and it's something that we hadn't seen in the Star Wars universe. And he's like sarcastic and smug and it's just it's just perfect. And then in the prequels, he's my favorite part of the prequels. I think he was something that was really well done from his first time. Now, obviously we never bought the fact that he wasn't the Emperor. I think there were some people in at Lucasfilm who were trying to like hide that he was the Emperor. But Well, and just... we knew from Extended Universe already. Right. You heard the name and you knew, oh, Palpatine right. is going to be the Emperor. But but it's, I mean, and it's the, the same, same actor. actor. Right, so that's a, that's a pretty big clue. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, just his manipulation and, you know, and I think the the... The number one scene is the when he's telling Anakin the story of Darth Plagueis and just feeding into everything that Anakin wants, like he tries to do with Luke. The second one that I want to pick is Grand Admiral Thrawn. Now, I haven't seen Star Wars Rebels, and so I don't know about the representation there, but I thought Timothy Zahn did something completely different when a lot of people would think, oh, you know, he's just going to make a new vader type character new dark jedi and he does make a dark jedi and that dude's you know joru sabeo <laughs> with two U's, so he's evil and he's kind of like a crazy clone weirdo but thrawn is great because he's a military strategist who like uses people's art against them and he's cool and calm and something completely different and so when you go from the movies and you sit down to read that first book it's it's different and it's the same and, and i really like thrawn now we're gonna move to everybody's favorite part of the episode the clone war review and this episode's called destroy malevolence a plan is only as good as those who see it through The final act in this three-part trilogy, Destroy Malevolence, was written by Tim Burns and directed by Brian Kalen O'Connell, which is a change-up from the first two episodes. 
In the last dying breaths of the Malevolence, Grievous is able to kidnap Padme and 3PO, thus putting Anakin into a tizzy. The young Jedi, along with his master, head to the Flaming Malevolence to save Padme, finish the Malevolence off, and hopefully finish Grievous off as well. What are your thoughts on Destroy Malevolence? Well, the 